Uh, back to the markets here. We're watching bank stocks very closely at this very second because Charlie's about to break some news. In a private meeting with lawmakers on Wednesday, this report came out that National Economic Council Director Gary Cohn said he would support legislation to break up the big banks and, in essence, bring back that controversial law known as Glass-Steagall, which a lot of people say kept us from having recessions and depressions and, and crises. Pre-2008. Pre-2008. Because Charlie was out. So you <laughs> went to the phones. Did Gary right. Cohn truly say this? Yeah, he did say this. Um, and the banks know he said it, because I've been talking to the executives at J.P. Morgan, at Bank of America, at Citigroup today to, to gauge their 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 fear quotient on this thing. I remember what Glass Steagall was. That before Glass Steagall, you could not really marry or bring in under one firm uh, investment banking and commercial banking. It got whittled away uh, over the years until until Citigroup came along. And when they created Citigroup, the combination of Travelers and Citicorp, which married investment banking and commercial banking from Citicorp, that was the death. That was the final nail in the coffin for Glass Steagall. That was back, I believe, in 19, 1999, 1998. A lot of people say that that marriage of all that risk caused the financial crisis. Um, we could debate that all day. I kind of think it had some impact on it. What was interesting is that Gary Cohn, who used to work at Goldman Sachs and was a, a supporter of getting rid of Glass-Steagall back in the day, Goldman was, mm -hmm. Hank Paulson when he ran Goldman was, was big into that, came out today and said we should maybe reimpose it, a new 21st century Glass-Steagall, and he was maybe in favor of breaking up the banks. Now, that's what he said yesterday. Here's what we know today. What sources are telling us at these banks is that they are not worried about this at all, that they've gotten assurances from the, from the Trump White House, essentially, that there is no plan right now to break up the banks. It, it's not even on the economic agenda. And they've also gotten assurances that Gary How Cohn, about restrictions? Well, point, just let me get to that in a second. And I'll, that they've also gotten some assurances that you know, Gary Cohn was speaking on his own behalf, not for the administration right here. Uh, we should point out that bank stocks have essentially been up today. We should show a chart of this because as I began tweeting this out, bank stocks have moved and, you know, they're moving up a little bit on this report, particularly you see Citigroup moving up a little bit. Uh, bank of America popped a little bit on my tweet. Uh, yeah, it did. And uh, th the bottom line is this. Uh, of all the things they have to worry about, they are not worried about um, Gary Cohn and, and Donald Trump trying to put the genie back in the bottle with Glass-Steagall. They just don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. That, they, that they're more worried about, does, do they get past tax reform for their bottom line and also regulatory reform? Do they, do they fix up uh, Dodd-Frank, which put a lot more regulations on them? That's what they're worried about. Uh, if, they, if, go ahead. if he did indeed truly say this, um, props to him. Whether you agree with Glass-Steagall or not, he is now in the government and he is not behaving like an ex-banker. He's behaving like somebody who cares about the American public. Am I being naive here and, and okay. saying, you know what, I'm going to lose friends on this? I would never call you naive, <laughs> but what he's proposing, if you carried it out, would hurt three banks in particular. The universal banks, J.P. Morgan, Citigroup, Bank of America. It would put in a better position, guess who? Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs, which is not a universal bank, which Gary Cohn was, was, president. was president for so long and worked there for so long. So I think the way this is, looks is that Gary Cohn is carrying water for Goldman Sachs. Now, he may truly believe this. So translation, that, Liz, you're naive. No, I'm no, it's not. I'm not. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm actually, I've, I've argued this with Jamie Dimon, the CEO of J.P. Morgan, that we should bring back Glass Steagall. I mean, he may really believe this. Uh, I'm just telling you that the, the optics are not that good because he's, he, this helps his old firm more than it, I mean, it hurts J.P. Morgan. Now, why does that matter? J.P. Morgan has made huge strides in investment banking in areas where Goldman Sachs used to dominate. One way they do that is because they have a big balance sheet and they're able to leverage that balance sheet to get deals. And when you go to J.P. Morgan and you're your Facebook, right? You want to do an IP? You want to do the RIPO? Guess what? You can only you could also borrow from J.P. Morgan. Right, right. And you can do that. Right? It's, that. it's a universal model. Um, so listen, if if he does this. You watch Jamie Dimon run to Capitol Hill. Okay. They're not going there yet because their initial calls to the Trump White House, this ain't even on the docket. We got other things to worry about. Health care. Charlie. Um, thank you. What, regular, Syria, regulation, North Syria, Korea, Syria, tax reform, yeah, et cetera. Charlie, you thank you. Breaking it right here. Close